The McRib wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the Chicken McNuggets. And the Chicken McNuggets wouldn't exist if the idea hadn't been brought to the table at McDonald's by one man, Rene Arend. Arend was the first executive chef for McDonald's. He had been assigned to create new food items for the McDonald's menu. To give you a little background about Arend, he graduated first in his class of the College Technique de Strasbourg in France. In the beginning of his career, he trained and he served as a chef's apprentice in his home country of Luxembourg. After his time in Luxembourg, Arend decided to travel to the United States. With his abilities as a chef, he wound up getting jobs in luxury hotels in Chicago. He spent six years as a chef in Chicago's Drake Hotel, and then later became the exclusive chef at the Whitehall Club, which is also in Chicago. As Arend was a chef for these luxury hotels, he wound up cooking meals for people like Cary Grant, Sophia Loren, the King of Belgium, and the Queen of England. As Arend was cooking in Chicago for these very high-status people, he was noticed by a Chicago native. A man by the name of Ray Kroc, the founder of McDonald's. Ray Kroc first took notice of Arendt's abilities in 1968. It took eight years of Ray Kroc convincing Arendt to work for McDonald's. Arendt's decision to make the jump from cooking at a hotel to McDonald's was that he'd be making food that would be enjoyed by millions of people instead of thousands in a dining hall. After eight years, in 1976, Rene Arendt joined McDonald's, becoming the fast food giant's first executive chef and corporate product development chef. As Arendt first joined up, this was during the mid-70s, the American public's tastes were shifting. The American public was wanting healthier alternatives, such as chicken. Also, with other fast food burger joints like Wendy's and Burger King showing McDonald's some healthy competition, they asked Arend to come up with a few new menu items. In 1979, McDonald's chairman of the board, Fred Turner, assigned Arend to create a new menu item using chicken. Throughout the day, Arend started experimenting with the chicken he had in the refrigerator. And this is when he came up with the idea for the Chicken McNuggets. Arend took the Chicken McNuggets to Fred Turner, who loved them. Turner then gave the McNuggets the green light to get into development to be created on a larger scale. The development of creating mass amounts of Chicken McNuggets took 18 months. During these 18 months, Arend made hundreds of different dipping sauces for the McNuggets. Among the hundreds of dipping sauces he created, he narrowed them down to three. The first sauce was a heavier barbecue sauce that was dippable. The other was a hot mustard dip. And the third was his most proudest, the sweet and sour sauce. 1981 came around and McDonald's ran into a problem. At the time, there wasn't enough chicken to supply every McDonald's location with McNuggets. This problem was fixed in 1983, but in 1981, as only select locations of McDonald's were going to get the Chicken McNuggets, the other McDonald's franchisees also wanted something new to add to their menu. As the chicken shortage was apparent and Arend knew he needed to come up with a new food item, he started looking back on a trip he took to Charleston, South Carolina. When he was down there, he remembered enjoying the barbecue a lot. He started focusing on the pulled pork sandwiches he had eaten there. And he thought to himself, a sandwich like that being served at McDonald's could be a hit. As Arend started creating and designing the sandwich, people said, why don't you just make the pork patty circular? Arend simply replied back saying, I like the pork patty in the shape of a little rack of ribs. So now we come to the question of how does this thing look like a little mini rack of ribs? Some people have said that it's all created from stuff picked up off the butcher's floor, just leftover trimmings and what have you. Now, I got to say that is all false. It's not even a rumor. It's just completely false. The reason these rumors exist 
is from the process McDonald's uses to make these little racks of ribs in the shape that they are. The process of making meat into any shape you want started in the 1960s in the United States Army. This process is called restructured meat or fabricated meat, and it was used in an attempt to lower the Army's food bill. The process of restructured meat starts with all of the flesh being stripped from the bone, which is then tumbled with salt and a protein that works like a glue. After that, fat and sodium phosphate is added to it for richness and juiciness. Then the final step is shaping this meat in whatever shape you want it to be in. From nuggets in the shape of dinosaurs, to patties, to, yes, mini racks of ribs. The process of restructured meat uses meat from all different parts of the animal. Now, the difference is, is that McDonald's doesn't use every part. McDonald's uses pork shoulder meat to restructure the meat to shape it into little mini racks of ribs. So all of the rumors of McDonald's using meat scraps is from the association of the process that they use to make the meat into the McRib shape. So now we looked at the traditional way of how restructured meat was made. Let's take a look now at how the McRib is made. Step by step. So step one, the McRib comes from chopped pork shoulder. Step two, it's then seasoned and ground up. Step three, the meat is then put into these little mini rack of rib shaped molds. And then step four, it's flash frozen, put into bags, and then ready to be shipped. Now this entire process of going from chopped meat into a little mini rack of ribs takes only 45 minutes. So there you go. If you ever come across someone online being snarky, wanting to bash the McRib, saying it's mystery meat, you can now set them straight. 1981, the McRib is sold for the first time in test markets in the Midwest. This included cities like Kansas City and St. Louis. The results from testing came back positive. People were ordering and they liked it. In early 1982, the McRib was nationwide. A little under half of all McDonald's stores were carrying the McRib. And then the next few years, more McDonald's locations were carrying the McRib as well. But there seemed to be a problem. McDonald's was seeing a pattern that the McRib was kind of a one-time deal per customer. By 1983, McDonald's owners weren't happy with the sales of the McRib. One newspaper from 1983 said that the McRib was a, quote, McFlop. Going from 1984 to 1985, sales were dropping more and more, and McDonald's locations were taking the McRib off of their menu. So by the end of 1985, the McRib was discontinued from its place as a full-time menu item. And then, after the McRib was pulled... It only returned when McDonald's felt like making it a limited time thing. As the McRib was just a promotional item, individual McDonald's locations had the choice to carry it or not. From 1985 through the early 1990s, the McRib was available for a limited time, but not in all locations. This is when the McRib started getting a very loyal fan base where people would go crazy looking for the McRib, trying to find it wherever they could when it was available. And if you were one of these people in search of the McRib, your prayers were answered when in 1994, McDonald's made the McRib nationwide once again in promotion for the live-action movie, The Flintstones. After this promotion, and up until 2004, the McRib continued to pop up in certain locations for limited times. By 2004, McDonald's knew that they would always be bringing back the McRib, only out for a limited time, because they had the idea now that the McRib sold a lot better if they only had a certain time window it was available. November 1st, 2005. McDonald's announced that the McRib was going away forever after a McRib farewell tour. Along with this, McDonald's created a website with a petition to save the McRib. 
The next year, on October 16, 2006, a website for the McRib Farewell Tour 2 popped up. The next two years after that, 2007-2008, McDonald's did the same kind of promotion with the McRib Farewell Tour 3 and 4. All of this was basically to promote that the McRib was available once again. That's all it really was. So from then, all the way up until today, the McRib has seen its return almost every time towards the end of the year, or close to it. Sometimes coming back as early as October, or a little later, as the McRib made its return for 2020 on December 2nd. Arend said that the McRib's initial failure is that the American market wasn't into pork as much as the burgers McDonald's offers. That may be true for the long haul, but as the McRib now has a legendary status as it returns every single year, I say regardless, if you're a fan or not, the McRib will live on and light a glow upon everybody's face when it returns year and year again. And that is the history of the McRib. 